Hello from Halifax. This is Joe with Joe to the World Creations, and today we're going to be making my classic baby blanket. This is a very easy pattern that is beginner friendly and works up really quickly. I think it might become my go to baby blanket pattern from now on. The pattern creates a blanket that is approximately 36 inches wide and 50 inches high, including the border. But instructions for adjusting the size are included in the video. What you'll need to complete this pattern is approximately 1,500 yards of any worsted weight medium size four yarn. I used Pound of Love by Lion Brand in the color Antique White. For a hook, you'll need a size H or five millimeter hook and you'll also need scissors, yarn needle, measuring tape, and the pattern. The pattern for this blanket is available for free on my website, or you can purchase the ad-free, nicely laid out PDF of this pattern that you can print and save and keep forever. Links to both are included in the description below this video. Let's get started. So I've got my yarn and my hook. Just a couple notes here is I'm using a, a blue colored yarn for this video tutorial so it's easier to see. For a hook, I use an H or a five millimeter hook for the entire pattern, but if you crochet tightly, you may wanna go up one hook size for the starting chains only. I don't, I use the same hook, but you're welcome to go up one hook size just for the starting chains. To make a blanket that is approximately 36 inches wide, which includes the border, so it's about 33 inches without the border, you're going to want to chain 127. Or you can make any number of starting chains in multiples of 4 plus 3. So that's any number that can be divided by 4, like 40 or 80, and then add 3 to that number. So if you want to make a blanket that is 36 inches wide with the border, chain 127. So to get started, we're going to make a slip knot. We're going to make a loop, pull through another loop, and put that loop on your hook and pull tight and get started making your starting chains. So you go ahead, put me on pause and come back to the video when you have your number of starting chains that you would like to make for the blanket. With our starting chains now complete, we are going to begin row one. And for row one, we are going to be working in the back ridge loops of the starting chain. And where those loops are, are on the back, these back little bumps are the back ridge loops. So in the second chain from hook, slightly twist your starting chains and into that second back ridge loop, single crochet. With your single crochet now completed, we're gonna chain two, one, two. In the next back ridge loop, we're gonna make two double crochet stitches in the same back ridge loop. That's one. We're going to make a second in that same back ridge loop. And there is two double crochet stitches now complete. As you can see in this where we've chained two, it creates a bit of a gap here and that's called a chain two space. And that's important because we're going to be working into that chain two space throughout the remainder of the pattern. So with our two double crochet stitches completed in the same back ridge loop, we are going to skip the next two chains. So skip the next one and the next one. And in the following chain, it's still into that back ridge loop. We're going to single crochet. Once again, we are going to, once I pick out my dog here, that is just absolutely everywhere, we are going to chain two. So I've made a single crochet, chain two, and in the next chain, we're gonna make two double crochet stitches into the next back ridge loop. Thank you. 
and you're going to do that all across the row. So after making two double crochet stitches into a back ridge loop, skip two chains. In the next chain, single crochet, chain two. In the next chain, make two double crochet stitches into the next chain. So do that all the way across and your last two stitches, your second last stitch, or I should say chain, in your last second last chain will be a single crochet, then chain two, and then your very last chain will be two double crochet stitches in the last chain. With row one now completed, if you wanna count your stitches, only count the single crochet and double crochet stitches that you made across. Don't count the chains. If you chained 127 starting chains, then you should have 96 stitches completed at the end of row one. So to start row two, we are going to chain one and turn. For row two and for the rest of the pattern is a one stitch repeat. And it's super, super easy. We're only gonna be working into the chain two space, which is the space between the two double crochet stitches and the single crochet stitch. So the space right here, we're gonna work directly into that, ignoring all the other st stitches. So into this chain two space, we are going to single crochet. So let's do that now. And then chain two, one, two, and into that same space, make two double crochet stitches. One, and our second double crochet stitch into that chain, the same chain two space. So the single, the chaining two, and the two double crochets were right into that chain two space, skipping all the other stitches. Now we go directly into the next chain two space by doing the exact same thing. Single, chain two, to make two double crochet stitches into the same chain two space. So single crochet, chain two, and into the same chain two space, double crochet, and make a second double crochet. And that is the entire pattern. So in each chain two space all the way across, you're going to single crochet, chain two, and make two double crochet stitches into the same chain two space. So go ahead and do that, and then let's meet back up um, at the very end of this row. So I've just done the same thing all the way across, and I have one chain two space left. And nothing special happens in this. That's what I just wanted to point out that at the end of the row, it's the same thing with one. We have one chain two space left. So we're going to do the same thing of single crochet, chain two, and make two double crochet stitches into the same chain two space. And that's it, that completes row two. To start row three, we chain one and we turn and do the exact same thing that we did for row two. And we're gonna do this for the remainder of the pattern. For your entire blanket, for each row, you chain one and turn, work directly into the chain two space, making a single crochet, chaining two, and two double crochet stitches into the chain two space. And you're gonna do that all the way across for every row. Every row has the same number of stitches. So if you chained 127, each row should have 96 stitches. And you're going to continue to do this one stitch repeat until your blanket measures approximately 47 inches. Or you can keep making it or, or make it less than that, but if you wanna make a blanket that's approximately 50 inches high, um, continue this uh, repeat 
until your blankets measures 47 inches and that's approximately a hundred rows. After um, you've reached your desired height, do not fasten off and note that when you want to end, it doesn't matter which row you end on. So whether it's an odd number of rows or even number of rows or which side your starting tail is on, it doesn't matter. Um, just come back to the video and we will start the border together. So now that you've reached your desired height of your blanket, we're going to start the border. So after working into the last chain two space, we're going to chain one, but we're not gonna turn. We're gonna work down the side of the blanket. So I'm just gonna turn over here, even though we're still working down the side. So I've chained one and we're gonna be working into the last double crochet stitch that we've made and then throughout these double crochet stitches all the way down. And there's no exact science to this. We want to crochet evenly down the side. And what that means is to space out single crochet stitches as evenly as possible, but the border is very forgiving. So don't worry if it's not absolutely exact. So now that we've chained one, we're gonna find a spot that we can single crochet into. So if you look here, there's a good spot at the bottom of the first double crochet stitch that we've, the, really the, the first double crochet stitch that we're gonna be working into, and we're going to single crochet into it. And then find another spot, here's a good one, that we can single crochet into. And always working into the stitches down the side, single crochet evenly down the side. Now this is definitely the trickiest part. And like I say, there's no exact science. So just try to make the same number of single crochet stitches evenly. So they're spaced out, making the same number into each double crochet stitch that you're working into all the way down. Come back to the video and we'll do the corner together. So after a single crocheting all the way down, you're gonna find, try to find the most corner-ish stitch. I wanna say that because there's not always a very obvious corner, but in this case, I see a, a good corner stitch to work into. Sometimes you'll see that it's, it's the last double crochet down the side, or sometimes you may pick the um, first chain. So I'm gonna work into this corner stitch right here, and I'm gonna make three single crochet stitches into the same stitch or space. So I made one, two, and three. Now we're gonna be working along the bottom into the chains that we made to start the blanket. And this is definitely tricky, so take your time and it can be quite tight to work into. But you're gonna try to find the chains and single crochet into each of these chains. But you're going to only single crochet into the next three chains and then skip one and then single crochet into the next three chains and skip one. So let's do that together. So I'm gonna find the first chain and try to work into two loops. Find this creates a nicer looking border that's doesn't have as too much of a gap. So I just crocheted into one chain. Let's do a second chain. And then a third chain in a row. And then we skip the next chain. And honestly, again, not totally an exact science. We just want to try to create a nice foundation to start the border. So I'm going to skip the next chain and work into the following chain. one and we're going to do a total of three once again we're going to do this all the way across so i just made one now i'm going to make a second into the next chain and a third into the next chain and then i'm going to skip the next chain after that so do this all the way across the border so you after you make three skip a chain and then make one two three single crochets skip a chain three skip three skip all the way to the corner and let's meet back up when we do the corner stitch so i've just made uh, single crochet stitches um, three at a time then skipping a chain three skip three skip all the way across 
So after your last skipped stitch, you may have a couple stitches before the corner. Just make sure you've skipped a st stitch and then work into however many stitches you have before the corner. It really doesn't matter. What we're trying to do by skipping some stitches is just make it so that there's not too many stitches at the bottom to replicate the, the width of the blanket, but it, don't worry at all about the exact number of stitches. So if you have a couple more stitches after your last skipped stitch before the corner, just single crochet into those. Once you get to the corner stitch, so I'm gonna find the most corner stitch here, and I'm gonna make three single crochet stitches into those that into that corner stitch. So one, two, and three. Now we're gonna repeat what we did down the side and work up the side by working into the double crochet stitches at the ends of each row and single crochet evenly up. Once again, I, I know I keep saying this, but it's not an exact science and just try to space out your single crochet stitches evenly, meaning don't make 10 in one double crochet stitch and then one in the other. Just try to make them in the same place throughout the whole side. And then once you're at the top, and I'm here right now, so I'll just keep going, you will be making three single crochet stitches into the chain, the first chain two space or the chain two space that's at the very end. So into that first chain two space, we're going to make three single crochet stitches. And that counts as our corner for this and then we are going to do the top. So what we're gonna do across the top, now that we've made our three single crochet stitches into the chain two space, we are going to single crochet in the tops of the double crochet stitches made from the last row we made. So we're going to single crochet into the tops of those. So let's do that now. So single crochet into the next two stitches, which are the tops of the double crochet stitches from the pre last row we completed and then we're going to skip everything else and work one single crochet into the chain two space so don't work into the single crochet the top of the single crochet and of course ignore the chains and just one single crochet into the chain two space now we're going to single crochet into the next two stitches which are the tops of the double crochets from the last row one and then two skip everything else and make a single crochet into the next chain two space and let's do that all the way across so single crochet in the next two stitches make one single crochet in the chain two space and then single crochet in the next two stitches one single crochet in the next chain two space and we'll meet back up um, at the very end of this top to complete round one. So I've just worked all across the top and I have two stitches left and I am going to single crochet into the last two stitches. One, two. Now we are not going to make three single crochet stitches into this corner. Instead, we are going to slip stitch into the first single crochet stitch made in the round. So after your last single crochet stitch, we just slip stitch to the first single crochet stitch made to join. To start round two, we are going to chain one and turn. And for round two, we are going to skip the first stitch, the stitch that's attached to the chain, and single crochet in each stitch around. And in each of the four corners, we're gonna make three single crochet stitches into the corner stitch. So you can go ahead and do this now. I don't think you need to, me to demonstrate here because it's pretty simple. We just skip that first stitch and then each stitch across single crochet 
into the corner stitch, make three single crochet stitches into each corner stitch. So there's your first corner, then single crochet all the way down into the next corner, three single crochet stitches all across here, single crochet across, three single crochet stitches, and then single crochet up. And into the last corner, you will make three single crochet stitches into that corner. And as you're nearing where you started, come back to the video and we'll do that together. So I've just finished single crocheting in each stitch around, making three single crochet stitches in each corner stitch. And I'm nearing, or I'm just about, uh, I am actually at the first single crochet made in the round. And um, I've just completed my last corner. You may have one or two more stitches before your first stitch. Whatever you have, it's okay. Just make sure you've made three single crochet stitches in the last corner. And we are going to slip stitch into the first single crochet stitch made to join. To, um, for rounds three and four, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're gonna chain one and turn, skip the first stitch, and you're gonna single crochet in each stitch around, and in each corner, make three single crochet stitches in each corner for all four corners. So you go ahead and do that and repeat what we just did, single crocheting all the way around, three single crochet stitches in each corner. Come back to the video after you've done this. So you're gonna do a total of twice for rounds three and four. And when you're nearing the end of round four, come back to the video and we'll do that together and then start round five. So I am nearing the end of round four. I have one stitch left, so I'm going to single crochet into that last stitch. And to join the round, I'm going to slip stitch into the first single crochet stitch made. So now you should have four rounds of single crochet stitches completed. Now let's start round five. So to start round five, we are going to chain two and turn. For this round, we are going to be making double crochet stitches all the way around, but we're gonna skip the first stitch, which is the stitch that's attached to the chain two that we just made. We're gonna double crochet in the next stitch. And we're gonna make double crochet stitches in each stitch around and in each corner stitch, which is the middle of the three single crochet stitches that you've made in the previous round, you're gonna make three double crochet stitches into each corner stitch for all four corners. So we'll do the first corner together where, um, well, first let me lead up to the corner. So I have a few stitches where in each stitch, all I do is double crochet. And then one more before the corner. And in the corner stitch, I'm gonna make three double crochet stitches into that corner stitch. and then continue making double crochet stitches in each stitch around. So you go ahead and do that, make a double crochet stitch in each stitch around, make three double crochet stitches in each corner and come back to the video when you're about to join the round and we will do that together. So to complete round five, we are going to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet stitch made. So slip stitch, and then to start round six, we're gonna chain one. And for round six, we are not gonna turn. We are going to skip the first stitch, the stitch that's attached to this chain, we're gonna skip that, and into the next stitch, slip stitch. Working into the next stitch, we're gonna make four single crochet stitches into the same stitch. So 
one, two, three, and four. And that creates our first shell. After a shell has been created, you're gonna skip the next stitch and into the next stitch, slip stitch. Then into the next stitch, make four single crochet stitches into the same stitch. One, two, three, and four. As you can see here, I'm working into the corner right now and nothing special happens at any of the corners. We're gonna repeat this pattern all the way around. It doesn't matter if it's around a corner. So I've just made a shell stitch of the four single crochet stitches into the same stitch. The next stitch after that, we skip. The stitch after that, we slip stitch. And into the next stitch, we make four single crochet stitches. So please repeat this pattern all the way around. So after your four single crochet stitches, you skip a stitch, slip stitch into the next stitch, four single crochet stitches. And again, doesn't matter if it's around a corner, you do the same thing all the way around. And come back to the video when you're getting close to the first shell made and we will finish the round together. So I've just finished making shells all the way around and I'm almost finished round six. As you approach your first shell made, your goal is to have a slip stitch right before um, the, the first shell made and your last shell. So if your number of shells is working out, the pattern um, works out, that's great. But if for any reason, your pattern isn't working out because we didn't count stitches to make sure you had the exact number of stitches just because it's so easy to fix. All you need to do is back up a shell or two and instead of skipping a stitch, just slip stitch right into the next stitch after one of the previous shells and then make your shell in this stitch slip stitch, make a shell, just to make the pattern work. Um, but there's lots of flexibility here. We just want it to look fairly even. So that's how you would um, make sure that the pattern's gonna work by just backing up a few shells. So I'm gonna come back once I'm really close and show you how to finish off. So I've just completed my last shell and to finish off round six, I'm going to slip stitch into the stitch before the first shell made. And it might look a little bit raised, but once you weave in your loose ends, it becomes nice and tight like that, and then you can't even tell that that's where you joined. So that's the entire pattern. All that's left to do now is fasten off and weave in all your loose ends. I really hope you enjoyed making this blanket. If you like this video, I'd be delighted if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.